Hey, so I was thinking today, I've got a lot of Twitter messages, like DMs and like comments on my YouTube videos and my Facebook page. A lot of people asking me where I think game two for Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to pick up based on what very, 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 very little bit we know about it and how the game ended and all that other kind of stuff. So I thought I would kind of share that with you all right now, kind of what I think we can expect from game two where I think it might pick up, where I think it might go, where I think it might end, some of the twists and turns we might see. But I don't want this to be a super long video. Just uh, a lot of people have asked me these questions. So I kind of jotted a couple of questions down. I'm just gonna kind of answer all the stuff in one quick video and just kind of get it out there. I am very excited about game number two. I think, uh, I think we can expect, I think it's gonna be bigger than a lot of people are expecting just because of the comment that Tetsuya Nomura made where he said he wanted to get these games out more quickly and whatnot so I think I think they're gonna be not very short though right I don't think they're gonna be very short I think we're gonna get longer games than people expect I would what I would like to see is I would like to see them pick up short you know a few days after game number one right so I think as they're leaving getting out of the wastelands right maybe they're maybe they're running from sh some shinra troops maybe you have like a, a quick little boss fight in the opening of the game or a situation that acts as a tutorial for red 13 right it's like okay this is how you uh this this is how you use red 13 these are his abilities let's, let's get into the fight let's go you know what i mean so i think that would be really cool to get that right from the start and you get out of the wasteland, where are you headed? You're headed to Calm, right? So the party, they're, they're weary off the road. It took a long time to get out of the wastelands. They're tired, they're beat up. They're gonna, they're gonna lay low and Calm for a little while. And I think in Calm you see like a pretty good sized town, right? Nice buildings. This is our first taste of the world of remake the reimagined final fantasy 7 world outside of the dingy kind of midgar this is the first chance you get to see like a different culture right and i think it'll be interesting to see the architecture of calm i i really am interested about that like how the people dress in the different towns the different areas of the world of gaia i'm really interested in that so we get the scene right we we get the scene where cloud is talking about what happened his his connection to sephiroth what happened those five years ago because people are going to be wanting to know you know what is your history with this dude what is your history with sephiroth spit it out you know much like it kind of was in the original game right he's like okay well I'll, I'll tell the story and this is while they're staying at calm you get the story right there it's tailor-made it's laid out it's right there right even though things are changing i think a lot is gonna stay the same as far as like what happens with characters they're gonna inject new characters into the game but i think a lot of what centers around the different characters will stay the stay similar for the most part um, especially with like deaths and things like that so but i won't get into that uh right just yet so you tell the story you get ready to leave Calm. You know, there's a Shinra presence there. I think something's going to happen with Shinra at Calm. You're going to have to leave. And then it's going to take you to the Mithril Caves, the Midgar Zolom, that whole path. I think as you get rolling into the game, I think you're going to start seeing these little clues about somebody watching you, somebody watching from the shadows. It won't really interfere with the path, the trajectory of the story originally. You're, you're going to have to cross the sea, right? Um, yeah, or you're going to go to Junon. So then you wind up crossing the sea to Junon. So the path will remain largely the same. Uh, but you're going to have somebody watching you. You're going to have stuff happening kind of from the shadows. You're going to have this element of mystery going on, right? Because we got Zack still out there. We, we know that Biggs is alive. Those are the two things at least that we know. Other things have probably been changed. But we know those two things for sure at least are changed. So, Biggs is going to have something to do with Avalanche, and Barrett is MIA, right? Barrett is AWOL. Nobody knows where Barrett is or Tifa. They're MIA. Biggs gets some kind of like um, message from Avalanche. He's like, 
he, he gets he gets tied back up with that storyline or whatever he's gonna have something going on but I think as you're traveling you're gonna see little hints of Genesis out there there's gonna be little hints about Zach and what's going on with him I think Biggs will wind up going to Wu-Tai or something or wherever Zach is it might not be Wu-Tai wherever Zach is I think that's where Biggs is gonna wind up and I think he's gonna I think Biggs will wind up working with Zach on some missions or something like that uh, and then Biggs is gonna say something Biggs is gonna say something like oh wow yeah you fight like this one guy I was fighting with back in Midgar you know this guy named Cloud and Zach's gonna be like hold up what what'd you say and I think that's how Zach's gonna know about Cloud through Biggs because Zach is gonna be doing something with Avalanche and I, I still think it's gonna be Wu-Tai I think Zach Biggs will have some kind of, he'll, he'll either physically go there or he'll be communicating with base and know about Zach or, or something. There'll be a Biggs and Zach connection, I think. So you're traveling along, right? The thing I'm looking forward to most out of game number two, Aerith is not going to die at the end of game number two. I think she dies at the end of game number three because they really want you to get attached to her, right? They're really going to be feeding a lot into that. They're going to feed a lot into the when her and Zach finally meet again or whatever, because that's going to happen. That is going to happen. I think at the end of game number two, they're going to allude to the fact, to, to whatever's going to happen to her. I think it will happen toward the middle or end of game number three. I think this is going to be four games, right? So the big thing I'm looking forward to out of game number two is Coral. Knowing how John Bentley just absolutely knocked it out of the park as Barrett in this game, I can't wait to see what he does with Coral. I think it's going to be amazing. He's got to go back. He's got to face his demons. He's got to make peace with his past. They're going to have the whole story with Dine, which I think that'll be a little bit bigger. Also, one of the huge parts of game number two is going to be Cosmo Canyon. We have to get Cosmo Canyon in game number two, just like we have to get Mount, we have to get Coral, we have to get Nibelheim, we have to get Gold Saucer. Probably gonna have to get Rocket Town, but I don't think Rocket Town will be as huge, right? Uh, I think we're gonna we're not getting the Wu Tai. We're not getting the Wu Tai in game number two. I don't think. I think you'll see it. I think you'll hear about it in cutscenes or whatever. You'll know about it as the gamer, but you won't. The party won't get there in game number two. Cosmo Canyon is going to be huge because you're gonna have to get there because of Red Thirteen. Bugenhagen, as I've said before, and I'm gonna do another video on Bugenhagen really soon. Um, he is going to be an elite source of information in game number two. I think he's going to know what's going on with the Whispers, the Cutting of Fate, because he knows how to listen to the planet. Cosmo Canyon is going to be huge. The the G the G G cave G cave G cave how you want to say that that's going to be a big that's going to be emotional man. I I get emotional playing that part. You know, uh, Red Thirteen hates his father Sato, and then he finds out that. He was actually the great warrior. He was the great hero of Cosmo Canyon. I mean, I, I love, that's one of the best story points of Final Fantasy VII uh, is the, the Gi Cave and finding out about Seto and how he protected Nanaki and Cosmo Canyon from the uh, invaders. That, that's just brilliant storytelling. So Cosmo Canyon is going to be huge, and I can't wait for that part. Nibelheim is going to be huge. Gold Sot, well, okay, so there's a few parts I think are going to be really big. I kind of consider Coral... Gold Saucer, uh, one one thing, right? Because that all happens at once. So there's three big things I'm looking forward to. That, you're going to have Nibelheim. Nibelheim is going to be big. You're going to get Vincent. You, the whole mystery surrounding everything. I, I think that's going to be really just a, a great part of the game story-wise. I think a lot of that will remain intact. I think a lot of that will remain as it should be. The part with Coral, though, I think is going to be really good because you get to do Gold Saucer. You're going to get to see Dio. You're going to get to see all the stuff in Gold Saucer. I think it's going to be massive and immense. I, I wasn't big on playing the mini games and stuff in Gold Saucer. Like after I beat it, I'd go back and do the. Su I love the submarine game in OG Final Fantasy VII. That was my favorite. I hated the bike. I sucked at the bike. <laughs> I'm terrible at the bike. I'm not even great at it in remake, to be honest with you. Some people I see just killing it, you know, back and forth and everything, but. I was always really good at the sub game. That was my favorite. I, that was my favorite Gold Saucer game. I think we're going to see a, a few more things happen in Gold Saucer. Of course, we're going to get Keiichi most likely there if he does become a party member. Uh, so Coral Gold Saucer is going to be a big deal. That's going to be uh, that's going to be a big high point. Now, when you get to Nibelheim, 
that is going to be a very, very, very interesting part of the game because there's a few things they got to do, right? They have to establish to that point that there is something wrong with Cloud. The Tifa knows there's something off about Cloud, right? They kind of hinted at it in the first game, right? But I think after Cloud tells his story in Calm, I think she's going to be like, wait, wait, that's not... It's, they're going to allude to her having an issue with his story, like that's not how that happened or whatever, but they'll let it go. Like she's not going to interrupt his story or anything, but you're, you as the gamer, you as the viewer, are going to know that she has some kind of issue with it. And then it comes to a head when you get to Nibelheim. She's going to be like, you know, this was all destroyed. You know, what the hell, you know? my All of our families are dead. My dad was cut down by Sephiroth. Your mom was cut down by Sephiroth. How, how do you not remember any of this, you know? Um, I, I think that's where Tifa is going to come to a head. I think her and Cloud are going to have issues at that point. I think there's going to be a disconnect between the two characters. Like, don't even talk to me. I think they're going to play it up a little more dramatically in this game. And Shinra Mansion is where we get Vincent. Now, I think throughout game number two, you're going to have an element of mystery. You know, I, I said it's going to be Genesis, but I think, you know, they're going to do it in a way that makes you think, it's Vincent. It's Vincent watching. I don't think that's true. I think Vincent is still asleep under the Shinra Mansion. But something's going to happen in the game. Like they're going to allude to Vincent, right? There's going to be people saying stuff like, you know, there's something sleeping in the basement of the Shinra Mansion. Like, they're going to allude to it. And he will be a story point character now. He won't be something extra that you have to get or whatever. Uh, and I think as far as, like, where game number two will end, I think uh, a perfect ending for game number two. Because I really feel like game number two... It's going to be all about the party of Aerith figuring out what Sephiroth is doing and learning about the ancients and the black materia and all that kind of stuff, right? Because Sephiroth is, he changed destiny, right? But he's still, his goal is still the same goal. All he did in the first game was make it so that he can get to his end goal, right? To, to eliminate these things that are keeping him from winning this whole time so that he can achieve his goal, which is to strike the planet with the black, you know, with the meteor, to be at the center of that wound, to absorb all that and use the planet as a vessel to travel the cosmos. That's still his goal. What he was trying to accomplish in the first game was to get all the, the crap, all the whispers and stuff out of the way, the cries of the planet. So he's still gonna be after the black materia. He's still going to be after. He's still going to need to get the Temple of the Ancients thing done. He's still going to need to get the Black Materia out of there. That I think that right there is probably where Game Number Two ends. And you can end it in such a way to where after Temple of the Ancients, after the story Fallout stuff, whatever happens there, you can still play the game and run around the world and, and do extra stuff or whatever. It's just basically the story's on hold until game number three comes out, basically. I, th I think that's how they're gonna work that. Because I think game number two will be built, they will build all the world. Game number three, game number four will just be like the other discs of the game when you pop a new disc in. You know, the world's already there, you can see it, you can do it. Everything will be there, but not necessarily unlocked, right? So I think that's what game number three and number th four will be. I don't think we get any deaths in game number two. I think they're still setting the table in game number two. Game number one was an introduction to what they were doing. Game number two is going to set the table completely. Game number three, we start losing people. And I'm not going to get into that yet because we don't even know anything about game number two. I'm just telling you all what I think we might see and what I would like to see. Now, as far as battle system and carrying over all of your stuff, I've had a lot of people, <laughs> a bunch of people, that's maybe the biggest thing people have asked me about. I think from game number one to game number two, I think we won't carry our stuff and our levels over. Which, I think levels maybe, I think, I could see it taking like a percentage of your levels. If it's possible or not, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spitballing, but, because they cap you at level 50 for some reason, right? You can't, you can't get to level 99 in Final Fantasy VII Remake. They cap you at 50. I think they cap you at 50 because they do want your levels at least to carry over now. 
your weapons and your materia, I don't think are going to carry over. I don't. Because I felt like, as much as I love Remake, I felt like the materia was a little too easy to master. That materia is, a, and that's all the materia, right? It's going to be hard to think up new materials, especially magic materials and stuff, to have for the rest of the two or three games they still have to do for Remake. So I think you reset all that. They use some kind of excuse like, it's, it's oh, it's just manufactured Shinra materia. You want to find the real materia out there in the world, you know, that really contains the, the knowledge of the ancients, so you can really use powerful spells. However they decide to do that, whether it's, say, it's refined materia, it's not as good, you want to throw it away, or, here's another thing, right? If they want to redo all the materia and not have your materia carry over, right from the jump, you get attacked by Yuffie, right? You get, you get ambushed by Yuffie or something like that. She steals all of your materia, all of your weapons. She ganks everything from you. And that's how they introduce Yuffie. And that's how they reset all of your gear, all of your materia, but let you keep your levels. I feel like that's what they're going to do because they're going to want you to find new weapons and stuff like that throughout the game. I would love to see them do something with clouds like uh, co combination sword, like he has in Advent Children, uh, the multi-section combinational sword. I would love to see them like, you know, oh, well, you got these three or four old swords you've had throughout the game. Do you want to refine those down to pieces and you know put them together as one sword? Yes, let's do that, you know. There's a lot of different ways they can go about it. I think the combat system and the gameplay are excellent. I wouldn't change. I wouldn't touch that. Now they're going to have to tweak some. They're going to have to make a new kind of like they're going to fix aerial and camera. They're going to have to fix the aerial combat and the camera because for characters like Yuffie and especially Vincent, he's going to be flying around and doing all kinds of stuff. And you got Sid, but I could see Sid being kind of like a dragoon type character. Well, he kind of is a dragoon. He's a lancer, right? So I could see them, they're gonna have to tweak some gameplay, like the camera and things like that, and aerial combat for those characters. But uh, outside of that, I think the combat's great. I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it. I think that's great. But I think they will reset your uh, material, they will reset your gear. Uh, so Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. I kinda think the, the highlights I wanna see, I kinda shared that with you all. They're gonna allude to Aerith's death probably in the middle of the end of game three uh, because they, they want you to get a little more attached to that character, a little more attached to that character, and they wanna blindside you. They, they, they don't want to have a cut and paste, you know, this is how she died in the first game. So when you get to that area in the Forgotten Capital and she's praying, you're gonna be like, here it comes, here it comes. And it's not gonna happen, right? It's not gonna happen, but she is gonna die. She's gonna die differently, right? And I have a theory on that, but I'm gonna say that for another video because, like I said in the previous video, I think that's gonna piss some people off. Uh, and I hope I'm wrong, but I have this gut feeling I know how they're gonna do her death. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I think. Uh, all the questions you all have asked me, uh, let me see my list here. What are some of the high points? Materia and gear levels carry over. Um, character deaths, character introductions. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think game number two is gonna be solid. I think it's gonna be longer than what we think it will be. And I'm excited for that. Uh, game number two, I mean, the first game, I've gone through three or four times now. I think I think I just finished it for a th third time. Yeah, because I finished on normal, hard, and then we did the lore kind of like uh, theory speculation run on Twitch. And yeah, so three times. But I'm excited about where it's going. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a fun ride. I can't wait to start seeing some official stuff coming out. But as far as my opinions on where I think it's going to go, what I would like to see, where it's going to go, there they are. So I thank you all for tuning into the video. If you all like that, please throw a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel so you get all the stuff as it's dropping. I'm trying to do daily videos right now. Got a few other things I'll be doing soon. Reviews, art videos, things like that. But until then, go have a great night. Keep rocking. Be good to each other. Stay safe out there. And I will see you in the next video.